what would you tell your 20 year old self? Most important, perhaps, is that not everybody's a giver. Unfortunately, there's people that are going to use you. Be careful. Give. And even if you get used, don't stop giving. Just say, next time I'll be wiser. But there are givers. Find givers. Hang around with friends that are givers. Hang around with business people. Hang around with doctors that are givers. Welcome, everybody, to Born Unstoppable. My name is Tiago Luzvargi, and I believe you were uniquely designed to be an unstoppable force for good. Each episode, we will be bringing you incredible guests that have overcome challenges in their life so that you can learn from their experience and implement their strategies to grow in the areas that matter the most, your health, wealth, and relationships. Hey, welcome back to another episode. In this one, I have the privilege of interviewing Milan Topolovic, the founder and CEO of TK Financial, author of Beyond the Tipping Point, partner at Barrington Wealth Partners, Inc., founder of The Inner Orbis, and, this is interesting, a former professional football player with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And I believe what you'll really find interesting is the underlying message that he is an overcomer. He shares that as a child, he was raised by his grandmother in Croatia with a bare minimum, a dirt floor, one stove, and no heating. After facing huge obstacles in his life, which we end up talking about, so stay tuned, he is now a successful CEO of his own company, which is extremely fascinating. So grab a pen and a paper and get ready to take notes. But before we start, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review this podcast if you have gained any value from it. It is one of the best ways to support the podcast and your feedback is very valuable. Don't forget to share the episode with your friends so that they can learn how to become unstoppable as well. Anything that you do to get the word out helps. Remember, this podcast is completely free and I'm not making any money from it whatsoever at the moment. So I pour a lot of my time and effort into producing this content while I'm in school because I believe that there's at least one person listening to this that feels stuck. They feel like they don't have what it takes. And I'm here to remind you that you can do this. Don't give up. All right, let's start the interview. All right, Milan, welcome to Born Unstoppable. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you very much for asking. That is amazing. I'm glad you're doing well, especially during these times. And I know you are someone who's been ad- adapting really quickly to the business environment, I guess, that COVID has brought. And so I'm so I'm looking forward to hearing from you, hearing your stories and your expertise and in terms of how people can apply your advice or tips and tricks in, in, in their life for like finances and mental toughness. But before we start, I want to jump into some rapid fire questions. I'm just going to ask you some questions really quickly. And if anything, you know, pops up, we can we can circle back around later in the podcast. Are you ready? Yes, let's go. All right. Where did you grow up? I grew up on a little village in Croatia. Literally dirt floor, one kitchen stove, no heat, no heating, outside toilet, outside well. So those were the beginnings from about two weeks of age till about eight when okay. I went to a bigger city in Zagreb to go to school. We can... We'll definitely have to kind of explore a little bit more of your origin story in a little bit. And where do you live now? I live in Ottawa, Canada. Okay. And where, what are you currently excited about? I'm excited about making changes. I'm all about change. I come from a professional background in sports and in sports, whether you're playing or coaching, which I've done for 15 years of coaching, uh, you have to adapt. And people would say, what kind of defense are you going to run? And I said, I don't know, because I don't know what we're going to be facing. Depends also on the players. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm doing now is just adapting and not sitting on my hands. I think that's a very important skill set that you learn from from sports that keeps coming up, up and up again in your life. What's one of your favorite books? My God, I've, I read about a book a week and I'm reading from Jordan Belford from his book from you know, basically, which is amazing about the straight line system. And I recently I read a book by a guy that used to coach me, Dan Sullivan, strategic coach. It's, it's who, not how. Okay. And 
I wish I would have had that book a long time ago because what it does in business, you always think about, okay, how am I going to advance my business? What am I going to do? It's always about how. Yeah. And it's never about who. And who is, who do I need to have with me or part of it to make it grow? Instead of, like one guy said, he was a general. He said, if I learned to type, I would have never become a general. <laughs> True. So I'm an avid reader. I, yeah. You know, it, and it just... Some books I have to put down and then go back to them after because they kind of don't really resonate with you. Yeah. Uh, others I'll, I'll listen to. Uh, I love audio. So I listen to them, whatever. Uh, audiobooks are super helpful. Do you, do you take notes in your book, like write in them? Well, ironically, Jordan's uh, book I've just listened to twice and I ordered a book. I got the book last weekend. Because I love underlining. You don't want to yeah. read my books after I finish. They're all <laughs> underlined. Highlighted, underlined. That's how I remember. So his book, even though I've listened to it now third time, as it's even now, yeah. I got the hard copy and underlining, and I'm finding some things that I missed mm. in the audio book. Yeah, for sure. That's interesting. You said you read a book a week. That's about 52 books a year. And I... I heard this week, and I've heard it before, that the average amount of books that a CEO reads is a book a week. So it's a pretty good stats. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's, you know, if you want a shortcut, uh, shortcut to things, you read books from, and then I always look at, you know, what somebody suggests, and I kind of look at the bio and see if, is it, is it interesting? Right. Okay. I'm trying to increase the amount I read. A little bit every day. I've never been an avid reader, but I'm trying to ramp it up because I'm acknowledging, appreciating more and more the amount of knowledge you can get from reading a book. Absolutely. What would you say is one of your superpowers? Resilience and keep coming back. One of my clients said, you're like a dog on a bone, but I love it. <laughs> Just don't give up. Right. And uh, being the fact that I've been through life, not some so easy, easy situations like lost my parents at 14 in a car accident that I survived. I was in the back seat. So I've had lots of opportunities, I guess I would call them, to keep yeah. coming back. Right. And sometimes it's hard, uh, and especially owning your own business. It's very difficult because you have to make changes on the go. You get up in the morning, it's like COVID started. You know, where do I go? Whereas before, I would have meetings every two hours, and then you go, okay, now I can have meetings. Now it's Zoom calls. And for a person like myself that's relationship-based, that's tough. But yeah. we've succeeded, but it's just the reality of today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely want to kind of, I think that your origin story, I think once we get into that and your upbringing, it's going to definitely set the the canvas, the scenery for why who you are now and how you're able to succeed in all these no matter what change comes like you've been through so much that that's why you're able to persevere so much more and the last question is what do you feel is holding people back from finding success in business well i'll, I'll start off with being an avid reader years ago i'm much older than you they used to show a pie chart with all the different pieces spiritual financial whatever. And it was always a perfect chart. And people think that the life is perfect. In business or life, it's never like a hockey stick where you're going up, 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 up. It's one of these up and down, up and down, up and down. And the problem is we all think that success is something that's just got to come along. No, it doesn't. Nobody guarantees you success. So that's how I see it. Yeah, no, that's so true. I was actually thinking about the, that. I think about that often because to be honest, no matter what kind of endeavor I do, like whether it's podcast, YouTube or school, I'm starting to realize like, man, it is not easy to, you know, people who are successful, they make it look easy and they've had to go through a lot to get there. And it's not like you said, it's not a hockey stick and there's just ups and downs and they really really try your mindset in, into wanting to give up, but you can't. And I feel like maybe th there's obviously difference in, in different generations. But part of me feels like each generation is kind of considering quitting a lot faster on a very broad, like huge generalization. 
because everybody's upbringing is is very different. But that's something that I notice, and I always think back is like, wow, the transition from living at home with my parents in high school to then going to university to now in like medical school, like it's just becoming more and more chaotic. <laughs> Yeah, it's, I can give you a, an example of, of believing in yourself. A friend of mine, he owned a company called MedEng. MedEng designed bomb suits to take explosives apart. You see them on her lacquer movie. That's their company. He sold it. They sold it for a big sum of money eventually. Do you know that he blew himself up eight times in his own bomb suit to prove how it works? He wasn't hurt? <laughs> no. He wow. believed in his product. He blew himself up eight times. They became the number one bomb suit company in the world. Wow. <laughs> That's so <risky. laughs> So, we're, so when you're thinking, well, do I give up? Do I, you know how much do I believe in myself? Uh, his name is Richard LeBay. You can look him up. It's, yeah. it's quite amazing. Richard LeBay. And there's a school, there's Ottawa U, University of Ottawa has an engineering building named after him. He's a huge philanthropist, but most people what? don't know that because he's, oh, he's not a show guy. Yeah, yeah. That's neat. Yeah, he definitely trusted himself and in, in the work he put into that. Oh, absolutely. All right. So let's jump in a little bit to your origin story because I know you, like you've mentioned, you came from Croatia and you didn't have much and then you come and... and your parents, you guys get in a car accident, you lose your parents early. So I think a person's background story is so important to be able to understand who they've become and also to encourage listeners here that maybe have had a, a tough background or maybe they haven't had such a tough background, but they feel like they just can't do it. And so they mm -hmm. can pull some encouragement from from what you've achieved and, and done. So, you know, take us back to when you were young and, and bring us up until today. I grew up with my grandmother on the village, literally village. I'm talking dirt floor, not a lot of food because my my parents were in a bigger city. They couldn't afford to keep uh, to take care of me. And my father worked in Germany whilst my mother was in Zagreb. So I grew up in that that type of environment. So it, it wasn't like, you know, I remember the first time I ever got a pair of jeans. It was like a miracle. Somebody brought them from Italy. I thought, that get, you know, like, this is it. So that's the beginning. And then we basically, we came to Canada. My father had two jobs. He would finish one, go to the other till 11 o'clock, get up early in the morning. Same thing. My mother as well, super hardworking. There were uh, hard workers. They didn't speak English. I was the one that was the, had to learn English in a year. And lo and behold, we were going to a soccer game and passing a car, and the guy decided to speed up and not let us get back into our lane. From the other side, head on, a car came at 70 miles an hour. I was in the back seat. That's in 71. No seat belts, no nothing. Mm. My mother fell out. She died on a spot. My father died three weeks later. So I go from a town called Acton of 3,500 people at the time to a city of Hamilton. No friends, no nothing. Lucky by the grace of God, I was, I was into sports. Yeah. So first year, high school, wrestling, basketball, soccer, track, football, I knew nothing about, but I joined the football team. That kept me busy. So that's how I survived, by keeping busy and keeping active. Wow. Then I went through high school in Hamilton, had a bunch of scholarships for American schools like Florida State, Bucknell, Cornell. And then, lo and behold, all my friends are engineers, so I went to Waterloo University to do engineering. Before the school started, I'm in Hamilton at a football game, professional game, and the university coach from the University of Ottawa says, hey, what are you doing here? And I said, well, I'm in Waterloo. He goes, well, come up to Ottawa. So lo and behold, I came to University of Ottawa. It was totally different from what I was being offered in Cornell and all these American schools. But I went there, finished my schooling, and I was drafted by Winnipeg Blue Bombers, where I stayed in the CFL for a couple of years. I had to make a decision, which was tough, because in grade 10, I made a decision I was going to play professional football. Mm -hmm. I knew I, 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 whatever I did was always people, because I also played soccer at a high level. And yeah. they said, why don't you go play for Toronto Metro? And I said, no. My, my goal was always football. And, but then when I got there, 
you know how you're climbing the ladder and you think you're going somewhere and you get yeah. there and you go, this is not exactly what I, what I expected. And yes. it wasn't about the hard, how hard football was. It was just the way that the players were treated. And plus you're making 18, five in 81. And uh, then I said, well, I got to do something else. I joined the insurance industry, knowing zero people in Ottawa, zero. My first year, I think I doubled my income. I wore, And that year, I took a university course to complete my second degree. And then I also took another course in the insurance business. Plus, I coached football till about 8.30 at night at the University of Ottawa. So yeah, I was busy. stacked. Yeah. Uh, but it was always about giving back. And it still is. How can I help somebody? Wow. So thank you for sharing that. And when you were sharing your story about, about your parents, I got, I got chills because I can't imagine being in that position. And if, if you don't mind, can we go back a little bit? And I just want to, I'm always fascinated about how people can kind of, you know, make a comeback and overcome such difficult times. Do you remember kind of uh, your mindset or your, your thoughts at that moment? Like, did you do any like self-talk or was it just you kind of pushed it to the side and just stayed busy and eventually like over time things, you, your mind processed that, that event? More the latter. I would basically try to avoid it. So I was busy yeah. because there were no psychologists. There was nobody at the school to sit down with you and say, hey, what are you going through? So yeah. by keeping busy, I was able to avoid thinking about it. And only later in years, it kind of hits you when you kind of start thinking about stuff and you try to reason out why did this happen. But I didn't want to feel sorry for myself. Like people will say, me, say to me, they'll say, oh, you turned out really good. And I'm thinking, well, what was I supposed to turn out? Just because I lost my parents, was I supposed to become a criminal or a murderer? No. Yeah. So we we're all given as they say, and you know this, deck of cards. And which ones you throw away, which ones you keep. At times, I've thrown away the wrong ones. That's life. Yeah. Moving on to, to, to kind of now your business, at what point did you decide to, to start it? Like, What made you want to transition out of football and jump in, into becoming a businessman? Well, first of all, when I transitioned out of football, I didn't watch any football games for two years. No newspapers, no radio, no listening, nothing. Because I had to call Turkey. My first, after the first season, when I decided not to play, I got a call from the general manager saying Big Top, which was my nickname. We'd like you to come back and play. And I'm thinking, whoa, I'm doubling my income here. It wasn't just about income. It was a career in the financial services business. And I'm going here where it's second to second. Literally, if you got hurt, you're done. Yeah. So then, then the transition was, I was still playing for the Ottawa Rough Riders at the time. And uh, somebody said, would you like to talk to this guy from an insurance company? So I said, sure, why not? And then I changed. I decided to, to make a shift and started in the business. So the second year when they called back, when Winnipeg, well, actually Winnipeg called me back, and they said, Big Top, we'd like you to come back. And I'm going, no. And uh, it was tough because, it, remember, it was my dream since grade 10 that I wanted to play pro football. Yeah. Yeah, so sometimes, you know, we have this, this idea of what our dream is or what our, the ideal scenario is. But when you get there, it's just not the same. And then you have to pivot. And, and make a shift. You have to like question yourself or question your intentions. Like, hey, is this really going to satisfy me? Is this going to, is this the person that I want to become? Or do I need to make a pivot right now, change the mindset and look for something that's different, better, or just that gives me a different future? Yeah, you could, I could have stayed. And I'll tell you what the pivot was. I was in the general manager's office and I was signing one, one of four contracts in the first year. It's all, there's a lot of weird stuff that goes on. So I'm in signing a contract and behind him, there's, there's, there are hooks with little round things that you hang on with name, names of players for each team. Right. And they're trading players like it's cattle. And mm -hmm. that was an eye opener because for me was, 
I was drafted by Winnipeg. I was going to give them all. This is it. Like, you know, you think like you go to your university and this is my university. Well, then you realize, wait a minute, this is not what it's like. They're trading people like cattle. And I just said, no, I got more to give. And that's why I decided to make a change. But I had to keep away from the game. Yeah. Other than coaching. So I decided I'll coach other, other at the University of Ottawa and then eventually in, in a city in the Ontario League. Right. And d- do you think you were passionate at that time about the, the area, the field that you're going into, kind of like money, uh, finances? Were you passionate about that or was it just kind of an opportunity that opened up and you took advantage of it and then just grew? It was more of an opportunity, and I, I never, I've never sold. I've owned divisions that did investments, but I never sold an investment. Ironically, the fact that I lost my parents in a car accident, I was selling a product that was replacing money for people that are facing the same situation. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of like, is this by the grace of God that I, I get into a product where I'm helping people protect themselves? Yeah. And I know that, that that life can teach us a lot of lessons and you've been through such different, very like drastic changes, I feel, throughout your life. What talking about focusing on, on the business aspect of things, because I, I think there could be some entrepreneurial spirits, people listening to this podcast, is looking back, what would what do you think you would have done differently when you started? Do you have any advice for people who maybe want to start a business? And what what advice would you give them? I would make number one advice, which I didn't have, find competent advisors, uh, find mentors. And there's a lot of people that are willing to be mentors. You know, like when you're young and you, th- or, or you think, well, wait a minute, you know, I can't get a mentor. You'd be surprised. How many high-end quality people I mentor, and I'm not talking that I'm one of these high-end quality people, but I tend to think I'm pretty good. I do mentor people. I mentor Mm -hmm. professional football player. I mentor people that I've actually coached while they were kids. Help them get 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 a career going while they're still playing the sport. So to me, again, in business, it's not easy. Don't go into business if you want to create a job for yourself. It's too hard. Drive a bus. You you leave the bus, you're gone. In my business, so I didn't know I wanted to do, it started in the insurance business. So I said, okay, who do I want to serve? Business owners and professionals and Jewish clients. Not being Jewish, as you can imagine, that was pretty tough. Well, currently, I have lots of Jewish clients. Why? So I trained myself to know tax, legal, insurance. I, like I said to one of, one of the clients, I, I'm a rabbi, priest, marriage counselor, sex counselor, all in one. Because you develop relationships. So this was a perfect business for a person like me that cares about people. Yeah. You, you did it because you wanted, like you said, you weren't just creating a job for yourself. You wanted to serve people and give back to them. And not only just in one area, you actually ended up, I guess, by default or over time, serving people more holistically, you know, not not just like a business side, but like you said, all the other parts that come along with human interaction. Now, right. one of the things just even through in COVID, I've gotten my clients business opportunities. Put this person together with this person. I do a lot of that. I've been named by... Uh, Somebody I was at a function is the most connected person. I said, not yet, but I do have lots of contacts. So people will come to me and ask, last year, I think I helped one dealership, I don't know, seven, eight cars. Okay. So the idea is for, for me is help. How can I help you? I've arranged where a surgeon, I coach football with orthopedic surgeon, did knee surgeries for my buddies. Hmm. Did an, he, that same surgeon introduced to another surgeon, my senior associate's brother, who needed an ankle surgery because Chris didn't do it. So he goes, my buddy's doing it. So instead of my buddy waiting months to get his knee surgery, he was in in three weeks for surgery. Yeah. So it's who do you know? In business, I did a presentation at Ottawa University, a football program after practice. So I got a 
big, big room, 100 players. And the book I wrote, Beyond the Tipping Point, talks about this idea, you know, networking, putting things together. So I said to these guys, I said, you know, you're probably thinking you don't have a network. And they all look at you with a, you know, the, the stare. And I said, okay, in this uh, auditorium, there are 100 players. There's your network. 100 of, get to know each one of these guys. But that's how the world goes around. And yeah. in business, that's, I always tell people, have a strong network. Yeah, it's, it's who you know, not what you know, a lot of times that really propels your success and kind of creates opportunities. Because the more people you know, the more connections you make, the more opportunities you have. And in terms of, like you said, resources, knowing surgeons and you was able to help yeah. your, that person get a surgery a lot quicker. So, you know, just just to encourage the listeners right now is think about where you're at, whether it's school or business or like at your job. Think about the people that you interact on a, on a daily, weekly, monthly basis and how can you connect with one person each day or each week and just get to know them and become friends with them because that friendship can ultimately in the future develop to, if you're in business, a business deal or a partnership or just a stronger network where you can go to a friend and ask something and they have advice. You, can, yeah. you never know what to expect because you don't know if you don't try. Yeah, you don't know who knows who. And, and be genuine. It's not a show. It's not like, hey, if I get to know you, what do you do? Hey, wait a minute. I got a client that needs this. Bang. So, so the idea, and that's something that I don't have to think about personally. Mm -hmm. My mind, as soon as a guy calls me today, he says, I need, an, I need land and somebody to build a building of 30,000 square feet. Do you know somebody? Okay, well, let me get on the phone, call, make some calls. So yeah. go ahead. So the relationships, true relationships, not BS, not stuff where you're doing it for effect or you're trying to use somebody. No, it's not about that. Yeah. It's how can I genuinely help you? <clears throat> Have you ever found yourself in a situation, maybe before you got to the point where you genuinely wanted to help, where you were kind of taking the step, but you felt inauthentic like you want to help this person but at the same time you want to get something from them no in fact if that's gotten me into trouble and i'll tell you what i never felt that way but where where the, where the trouble comes in you want to help everybody and there are people that are users and there are people that are givers mm -hmm. and they're all out there they all look the same <laughs> except one wants one thing the other one's a giver and when you're a giver, you got to be careful. And it's, I've been used and abused because I give. So the difference that after a while you go, wait a minute, I'm still going to give, but I want to see, see what, what's their motive. So I don't need to get paid for everything I do, but I definitely, if I don't get respect, that becomes a problem. This is the exact same topic we talk about in our Facebook community, the Born Unstoppable community. It can be challenging to find a like-minded community working towards similar goals. So you can join the conversation there. Just go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash born unstoppable. Since we're on the topic of giving and just helping, what, what tips do you have for people to, to, to like give more consistently or just put others first? Is there anything for you? I know you say it kind of comes naturally. You've always kind of been a giver and put people yeah. first, but. If there's somebody who is, is like, oh man, I, I'm working on this skill. I want to just help people and, and cultivate this kind of giving spirit of generosity. Do you have any, any tips and what they can do? Easy. And this week, say to yourself, okay, I'm going to have one person or three people. That's my objective. Help somebody. Whatever it may take, whether it's to, you know, get them a, a, a car tire or help him something do what just just go start small so mm -hmm. it becomes a habit we, even one thing what can you do for somebody without expecting them to do anything for you just genuinely hey i want to help you yeah that's great yeah that's good advice and i think so if i were to tag something on there is that i've heard before is message message one to three people every week 
like an encouraging text. When I heard that on the podcast once, I decided to just pick somebody in my class that I'm in a, a group co- constantly with. And I said, hey, I noticed that you know, you, you're a leader in our group and I just wanted to appreciate that, encourage you and say, good job, keep going. And they're not expecting that. They're not expecting, I'm sure it makes their day because they're, they're hearing that and they're feeling encouraged. And it, it was one way of me to try to take one step forward in terms of giving. I'm not I'm giving a little bit of my time, but it's not much and it makes like somebody's day. So if somebody wants to take like the smallest step is pull out your phone and just message a, a kind message to somebody. Many times have you heard and I've read situations where where somebody wants to kill themselves. And their plan is to kill themselves that day. And somebody comes with an encouraging word and say, hey, you'll be OK. Let, let me let me show you how. Yeah, I've heard that. It's it's happened over and over and over again. So e- e- even just little things, you go to you go to a restaurant, look at the waitress or the waiter in the eye and say, I really appreciate that. Like start with that. It's 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 easy to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Always always be looking for these opportunities to to give encouragement and, and resources if you have resources, but just speak life into other people. Because it not only does it benefit that person, but it benefits you indirectly because you're going to feel good and you're just building this habit of constantly giving to people and encouraging them. It's the greatest feeling in the world when somebody gets back to you and says, listen, I really appreciate this. I really appreciate what you did. And I get more out of it than they do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's true. Majority majority of our audience are in their 20s. And we got some, I think, 18-year-olds. We got some people in their mid-30s and 40s. But because majority of the audience right now is in their 20s, and I'm in my 20s, I would love to hear some advice. It can be some some quick, basic advice about finances. Because I know that you deal a lot with families and businesses. And I'll ask another question, just tag it on as well. On top of the finances, could you share a little quick note on the importance of estate planning? Because I find it's something that's not on people's minds, but it is good to hear at least now before they have a business or have to actually start considering it. Well, I'll deal with the estate planning first. Because okay. it does involve finances. So when you talk about estate planning, and I, I write articles, as you probably know, people confuse estate planning with death planning, farthest from the truth. So why do people don't estate plan? This is something I've written a number of times. They don't think they're rich, rich enough. Oh, it's only for the rich people. They don't want to deal with the fact that they may die or become ill. And third, which I get involved with a lot, is family dynamics. You have blended families. You have a business, one person in the business, two, pe- two kids not in the business. How do you, you know, the, the idea equal and equitable? Yeah. They're two different things. One kid's working in the business with an MBA. She makes 50000 a year because it's a family business. Doesn't want to draw the big dollars that she probably should be paid. She... The other siblings are doing their own thing. So estate planning for parents and for young people. So you're a young couple. You, have, you may have a child and you say, well, if I die, everything goes to my wife. No, it doesn't. So will planning is a cornerstone of, of planning. And you know, like, again, I would suggest you go to a competent lawyer. What I mean by that, somebody that knows wills, somebody that doesn't tell his secretary or her secretary to get you something off the computer. We even, for our clients, even the mature clients, we have a questionnaire where we send it to them and say, listen, here are the items you want to look at before you go see your lawyer. For businesses, it's more complex yeah. because just there's a lot more moving parts. So financially wise, when you start off, I had no advice, zero. And the point of it is if you find yourself a financial planner, I am not a financial planner. I'm an estate planner. Totally different. Mm-hmm. So I, I've never sold an investment in my life. However, I direct traffic. There's this investment advisor. There's this investment advisor. So the idea 
start even starting small and say, okay, how much money I'm saving? What can I save? Do I put it in a TFSA account? Do I put it in an RSP? So find yourself an advisor that's willing to give you advice. But I'll say that some of them, unless you have a half a million dollars, you're done. They're not going to give you the advice. But yet they'll take on somebody at 20000 which is a sin in my opinion. Mm -hmm. If you're not going to give her or him advice, don't take him on. It's like you calling me, I need mortgage insurance. Listen, Catherine will help you. My senior associate will help you with that. But that's not the world I live in. Now, if you, look, if you call me and say, Milan, I, have a, I, have, I need a trust. I need a holding company. I need an operating company. How do these things work? Who do I need to talk to? Can you put a team together? Well, I have an accountant I'm comfortable. Great. Bring her in or bring him in. Yeah. So that's what I do on a daily basis. Now, we have some clients that are ultra rich. And we have my, my requirement is business owner professional. So docs, the, we got doctors, we got accountants, we got lawyers. And it's surprising the value that you bring. But I've always said, what more can I bring beyond the selling you a product? What else can I bring you? So you say, Milan, I need a mortgage. Wait a minute. I'm a mortgage broker. Boom. Well, I need to buy a house. Well, what size of house? Oh, I have a real estate agent. I need general insurance. I need to protect my property. Here, here's this company. Here's this agent that's going to call you. Most of my week is spent doing that. In addition to connections. planning, connecting. Yeah. And the reason why I bring that up, not only because you, you deal with estate planning, but recently, I'd say a couple months ago, I think in August, my, my grandpa passed away due in Brazil because of COVID. and. Yeah. Wow. Sorry to and, hear that. Yeah, thank you. And so my my dad had to go, like my grandma's still alive, and my dad had to go to Brazil to help kind of organize some of the financial things and sign off on papers. And they did not have estate planning. And there was a will, but it wasn't fully signed. It was incomplete. And now it's just a headache. My grandma has bills. They weren't the, I wouldn't say they weren't the most financially wise. Yeah. And so with all of that, on top of not having complete wills and, and estate planning, it's just like a mess for the people who are left behind, the family members who now have to kind of try to get all the, the scraps together and, and try to see like what piece works. And if the documents aren't signed, then you got to wait. And so my parents are in Brazil right now. They're going to come back in two days. Uh, because they got there and they're like, well, we got some work done, but the will wasn't finished and we have to let the, the due process to, to happen so they can eventually kind of decide what happens. But it's just a mess. So for, for those of you listening who have a business, get an estate plan and get your will done. For those of you who are, whose parents um, have a business, ask them to get that stuff done because it literally will save you so much headache like the person who passes away god bless them like it's sad but they don't suffer with this it's the people who stay behind that get the headache of dealing with it yeah in canada only 50 percent of people have will and the problem that it comes down to like like i'm i'm an you know past immigrant so are you so your will you may say okay here are my assets in canada let's say your grandma leaves you assets in brazil Canadian will is not. So you got to look at what jurisdiction your assets are, and people don't look at that. And so you could be double taxed. Let's say you're here and you're, you're, you're now living in Spain, and your parents are in Canada, they leave you on a state, and let's say you have to pay tax, not on primary residence, on, on stocks and bonds, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So you pay tax here, you're going to pay tax over there too. So there are specialist lawyers, even that we work with, even here in town, that basically that are super specialists. But when I see a client that has that issue, so simply when I meet clients, and especially because it's such a robust, we're all from somewhere, and say, okay, do you have assets in China still? Yes, I do. Well, don't worry about those. Okay, it doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the idea, the idea of having a proper person to deal with, that's a key as well. We are able, because of our network, to give you, bring you to the right person. 
that's not looking at a book trying to figure out how to do this. They already know how to do it. They could teach it. Yeah. But you're uh-huh. right. You're right. There is more planning. So you have your parents. Your parents inherit property from your grandparents, but they die. How are you going to get the asset? Yeah. <laughs> then it's really messy. Well, some uh, states, even in Canada, take seven years. Because just because of the, the fight in fighting, when there's money involved, oh my God, people come out of the woodwork. So the, wor- and the worst thing that you can do is leave your kids to that mess because it'll break. It's bro- I've seen it where it's broken families. Yeah, I can believe that. And that's, you know what? I'd rather burn everything I have. And do you know how much, like, I'm sure that it's very specific and for different situations, but you know how much it costs to make a will? You know what? It shouldn't cost you more than a thousand dollars. And if you're a business owner, you should also have a business will. So you say, okay, why do I need a business will? Let's say we're you and I are in business and we have a shareholder agreement, which there's about 16 some odd provisions. If you die, you get it's not just dying, it, the rules under the agreement. So now we have an agreement. Well, your, your shares of this company don't need to be probated. Probate is a tax that you pay if you don't have a will. So now you have a business will that says, wait a minute, I have a shareholder agreement. I don't need to probate my assets. So you can imagine people that have $5 million businesses at 1.5% is the, is the fee for if you don't have a proper will for probate fee So the, in Ontario. So the point of it is, and again, get a will done. It's not that difficult. Deal with a lawyer that basically that that know that not that they all know wills, but that they really work at them. Yeah. Good. All right. Yeah. I just want to throw that on people's radars who maybe have never considered this because it is kind of that part of adulting that yeah. uh, we have to think about. Let's shift gears now and, and jump sure. into a little bit more more personal advice or stories. This. So I know you're a man of faith. Uh, you've mentioned it uh, even on this podcast a couple of times. How has your faith played a role in in your life? Well, it's probably, well, I can tell you it saved my life because I've been through other things that are also not just this, what we talked about. And, you know, we all get down on our knees. You know, we should if we don't and just say, listen, God, like I'm really messed up or this is messed up. Please help me out. And somehow, and, and, and ironically, things when they do work out, people don't don't go back to the faith and say, "Hey, thanks. I know I yeah. didn't do it on my own." <laughs> you know how you make God laugh? Tell yeah. him your plans. Yeah, I, I heard that. <laughs> Which is true. It's true. When so, you look back, <laughs> yeah. So you you know you got the best laid plans. I'm going to go to college. I'm going or university. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to get married, have a white picket fence. They forget about the divorce. They forget about all the other pain that goes with that. Yeah, yeah. no, God, God, God is good. And, and I know not everybody believes in God. I know a lot of, I believe a couple, many listeners here do have a faith background. And fortunately, most of the speakers, I think, guests on this podcast have shared a little bit about their faith. And, you know, not, you don't, sometimes you'll go through, a, a dry season, what, what it feels like to be a dry season when you're like, oh God, like, where are you? I feel like you're not listening. I feel like you're not here. And if anybody out there is is like feeling that, just know that it's normal. You know, whenever I think, whenever I'm on a high or a, a low, I always think David, the King David, he went through it all. Like yeah. he just, he poured his emotions onto the, onto the pages. So now we can look back and say, oh, okay, it's normal that I might be uh, frustrated with God and he, maybe he's not answering or maybe I'm not listening, you know, or maybe you're super excited and you're living in a time of, of life that is very fruitful and there's these highs and lows, but God is always there and he never leaves us. And so I'm so grateful for, for people like you, Milan, that who, who serve God, whose faith is in God and that you remain strong through these difficult times. And I'm sure you've encouraged many people over, over your, your life in terms of, of God and where they're at. And it's really good to see uh, people with a strong uh, faith in their life. 
Well, I feel I think Garth Brooks has a song, Unanswered Dreams. And it's about, you know, pray, he used to pray to God that he would with this girl and da 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 that he would marry her or whatever. And then he later comes to a high school reunion and he goes, Oh, thank God for the unanswered dreams. <laughs> so, uh. so that's listen, am I perfect? Am I, you know, I if if anybody's starting to do something with the Bible. I read uh, one passage a morning, but Psalms are a good place to start. What is something that that you you failed at, and then how did you overcome it? Because I think a lot of us, it's so easy for us to to focus on our failures and maybe stumble and maybe have a hard time to get up. So, what would you? What's your advice for people who maybe are going through a difficult time? Maybe they they get rejected at something or fail at. A, a skill or something like that how did you get back up from your failures well i've uh, failed many times and it's like they say it's how long you stay down so i'll tell you probably one of the biggest failures i created tk financial the financial company there was a group insurance division selling employee benefits we grew large there was an investment division there was a state planning division there was an insurance division but different partners that were doing different things. So my failure was I assumed that we would all work together. So you benefit from a referral here, uh, all for one. And that's my biggest failure. It didn't happen. Mm -hmm. We sold the benefits division, the group insurance division, and I I stuck to what I do and, and, and just expanded it. And I feel that's probably the biggest failure in business for me, having this vision, which in itself would have been great. Yeah. But like they say in the book, good to great, right people on the bus, wrong people off the bus, and the people on the bus in the right seats. That's from good. That is it. Okay. I've never, I haven't read that book. <laughs> yeah. Good to great. And that's, it's so true for business. Yeah. And wh what, what, do you have any general steps in terms of how to just, you know, generally overcome any, any failures? For me, it's been helpful yeah. having family. And what's even more as helpful is having good friends. Mm -hmm. Having that support. Network. Listen, I got a huge, huge relationship base, but really good friends that you can call on as two buddies I have. And one of my buddies helped me all the way through, through a divorce, through challenges. And we talk probably twice a day. Wow. Just sometimes it's just, hey, man, what are you up to? You're breaking yeah. the, you know, are you, are you kicking butt? Are you keeping the economy going? He's a business owner as well. Yeah. I helped him actually, him and another client formulate a business that has been in business for 20 years now. I put them together. And it's my best friends. So two of them, I, if I call them middle of the night, they're there. Wow, but having, and again, is get yourself mentors. And you'd be surprised. That's, I, I say that over and over and over. I'm fortunate now. When I started, I had none. I didn't mm -hmm. have the right advisors. I didn't have the competent people. I had no mentors because I knew nobody. In this city, I virtually knew nobody. And lo and behold, having a mentor, having somebody you can trust. And if you do need to see somebody professionally, go see a, go see a psychologist, go see a doctor. You know, rather than, uh, and for me, I kind of did my reading books that helped me a lot. Yeah. You yeah, know? yeah. Book, books are your mentors too. Yeah. And so, <laughs> you know, you read something and you go, yeah, I get it. I only get it. I'm okay. Yeah. Speaking of books and knowing that you're, you're a high performer, I mean, you've been a high performer since since sports, really, because you have to be so dedicated and training yourself and tough mindset. What are some tools that you use on a daily basis to kind of keep your, your productivity level high to be able to achieve everything that you do? Okay, here's my routine. I'll share it with you. I get up, I, ha I read one passage from the Bible. Okay? And again, I don't go to church enough. I should, but I don't doesn't mean you can't be spiritual. The second is a planner. I have Michael Hyatt's. I just got his new planner. I had another one before, and I want to go back to Michael's. I used to be with it because it's just got more things I want. So I write into my planner for that day. 
what are my important things I want to do? And then I score at the bottom that I do them. So that's it. My database, ACT, we use ACT database. So I have, I don't know, 2,400 people in the database. So I can access any time. So that's that's another thing. I'm trying to think what else do we, I, I wrote them all down. Oh, yes, networking, LinkedIn, yeah. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. I'm posting constantly. And what I'm also posting is promoting my clients. So if I see my client, whether they're in a promotional business, whether they're in a construction business, whether a Mercedes dealer, local Mercedes dealer that's I bought last four cars from, I promote the heck out of them. When I bought my car, I, you probably saw a video of me with my new, my latest car. And it wasn't about me. I don't care. Yeah. It's about the client saying, hey, Star Motors does a great job. At this. And they do, by the way. I don't throw... I just helped them sell another car. A doctor client, a doctor person came that came in Ottawa referred to me. Goes Milan, I know you know these guys. I called the general manager. I said, Hey, Eve, this is what she's looking for. Boom! Next day, they bought the car. Need so an affiliate that, link. <laughs> yeah, and that's so. So that's my. So if, if whether you're in a clothing business and if you're a client of mine, mm. boom, I'll promote you. If you're in the food restaurant business, you. Listen, while COVID was on, I helped one guy get a business, one lawyer get a business plan done. I don't even know him. If you walked into my office, I wouldn't know who he is. A banker introduced me. Banker that was giving him a loan for his new office says he needs a business plan. I introduced him to Yusuf, a, a buddy of mine who's, yeah. who owns an accounting firm that, I, that I'm in his office. He did a business plan. And he said, I said to him, do you need to build, a, build an office? Yeah, I do. I said, wait a minute, here's a construction company that's built dental offices. Here, Paul. Paul, talk to him. And it's uh, that yeah, it's easy. You want you, you know, you want renovation work. Like the same lady that bought the Mercedes, she goes, You know these guys from Astro Design. That's my best friend. So I said, Yeah, Nick, no problem. Doot, 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 doot. Put them together. And Nick sends sends one of his 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 top top guy to visit her. Now, did they do? Did they buy it from him? I don't know. But the point of it is, I got him in the game. Yeah, and that's another action step, or just a kind of reinforcement for action step that people can take. Is you know, Milan isn't only helping people in in business and connecting people, but he's like, you're going above and beyond. You're going on social media and promoting these people promoting your friends when you don't have to and they're not expecting it and they're making money off of your promotions and that must feel them that must make them feel like a million bucks and they'll think of you so much more highly and if they ever need to do business with you or connect with you at at all it's like a no-brainer yeah and it's it's i i don't expect them to pay they don't pay it's not a pay thing it's like tell me what you need you know, you want windows, you want doors, you want this, you want that. Because remember, I like, I, I'm not bragging. I have over 900 clients. They're in that business professional space. So taking a few minutes, like the guy says, I need, I need, what do you call it, a piece of land to hold a building of 30,000. I need somebody to build it. I made a couple calls. I go, yeah, I got somebody that's going to build it for me. Well, I got to get a piece of land. So I talked to a guy in my office, the accountant that owns. I said, Yusuf, do you know somebody that has land for a 30,000 square foot building? I said, if you, if you do, I'll connect you with the guy that's looking to buy it. Mm-hmm. Wow. It's what, what can, it's, you know, Kennedy, what, was the, what did he say? It's not what you can do for the country, for yourself. It's what you can do for the country. So at yeah. the end of the day, God willing, I live a long time. I can help enough people. It's the impact. My kids today, who are two of them are in business themselves in their own businesses, are hearing this from people, your dad, your dad, your dad. Well, I didn't do it for that, but I did it for to say, hey, I'm giving back. Yeah. I was and my business allows you. me to do that. And people that knew people that don't know me, they think that they're only coming to me for professional advice. And I'm thinking, you so don't know what I, I can do for you beyond that. That's great. That's great. Yeah, going above and beyond for your clients, which is just like shows excellence, right? Like you're not just doing the bare minimum, but you're trying to serve them 
and give them the best treatment possible. Because one, that's just part of who you are and how you've kind of cultivated, you cultivated that mindset and that habit. But ultimately, like they, they'll pay it forward and it just, it, they'll help somebody and you're encouraging people by that. Like just by this conversation, like I'm, I feel more encouraged to, or motivated to encourage other people and build them up because you've done it. So that energy like transfers. Well, it does. And I, I have, you know, the ultimate, ultimate compliment is when a, when a parent that's a successful business owner says, my son just graduated, probably 20 graduated from college. He's thinking of doing this. Can you do me a favor and talk to him or her? So you turn around, have a conversation. Five years later, he's working with his father, doing amazing work. So in a small way, one breakfast, one conversation, you had an impact. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I'm going to someday die, hopefully as many years from now. But it's what you leave behind and people that you've helped. And people that can say, hey, you know what? That guy was around. He helped me out. Yeah. But that drives me. That's my why. That's a powerful why. That'll keep you going. Yeah, absolutely. No shortage. Milan, what are three three traits that you think make somebody unstoppable? I've got him. Number one, discipline. Be disciplined. Second, open-minded. And the third, take action now. Even small steps that seem small today can mean a difference. It's like they say, you run a mile one step at a time. Yeah. Those those are really good. Discipline, open-minded, and take action now. And you you had those off the top of your head. And I think discipline has come up before. I think that's a very common one and and obviously a very good trait. Because if you're not disciplined, then you're not gonna stick to anything. You're not gonna, you know, finish things through. And open minded, just the ability to to one, be corrected, you know, yeah. change, adapt, open minded during COVID, you know, yeah. shift your make those small pivot pivots and adjustments to kind of to go on a correct trajectory and take action. I think a lot of times, uh, you know, you hear people who buy books and put it on the shelf and they get shelf esteem. Uh. They don't read it. The important thing is that you read the book and then you take action, right? You read the Bible and you take action. You watch a course online and then you take action. And I'm guilty of this. Like I have courses that I've listened to. Maybe I didn't, I didn't take action right away. So then I have to go back and listen to it. But one of the best ways to ensure that you uh, you have progress and you change and you get new habits is by taking action every day. Right. I want to also let you know that if, if for your listeners, let's say you're reading a book and today doesn't really resonate with you. You know how you, I, I do that too. I struggle with the content. I go, ah, you know what? This is killing me. In the old days, I used to think I got to read this book to the end. Yes. <laughs> you don't. You can put the book aside. And I'll tell you, it's happened to me other times where I come back to it. And now all of a sudden, I'm hearing something totally different because I'm an audio guy. I do have tons of books in addition to that, a hard copy. But audio, because of the fact, all my travel time, I don't listen to the radio. If I'm alone, I listen to books. I love it. I love it. <laughs> It's, I'm the same way I listen. I listen to podcasts. I don't have a subscription yet to like the audiobooks, but I do listen to podcasts and I do have some free audiobooks that I listen to. It's so it's so good. And for people who, you know, are reading books, I've heard it said more a tip is like don't read books. Don't feel like you have to finish a book all the way through. Yeah. Think of it like an article. Like go to the to chapter that is relevant to you right now, read it and then, you know, put it away until you need the other chapter. Don't feel like chained down to finishing this book. I used to feel like that. Like I got to finish this book to the end. And some books will tell you, read a chapter, put it away, come back 30 days later. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Do you have a favorite quote? Yeah. No matter what you're in, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. That's a good quote. <laughs> it, it's, it's for everything. 
Yeah. My dad has told me that many times. Yeah. As oh, he's, I a felt, smart man. he's a wise man. <laughs> as I felt medical school would be challenging. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a um, grind. Football's yeah. a grind. The same thing, Tom Landry, they used to coach the Dallas Cowboys. You know what he said? He said, every season guys come to camp. They can run the 40 yards, jump high. They can, they can lift as much weights as the next guy. But there's a difference. They look the same. They can do all this stuff. There's a difference. There's pretenders and contenders. Mm. He says, you want to be a contender. Game in, game out, you know what you're going to get. And in business, it's the same thing. I don't want to be a pretender. I never was. I never will be. Be a contender. Do what you're going to say, what you're going to do, and do it now. Yeah. Take an action. Take action. What would you tell your 20-year-old self if you were to be able to sit down and have a, a conversation? What kind of advice would you give yourself? I would give myself, uh, number first, most important perhaps, is that not everybody's a giver. Unfortunately, there's people that are going to use you. Be careful. Give, and even if you get used, don't stop giving. Just say, next time I'll be wiser. Yeah. That because there, but there are givers. Find givers. Hang around with friends that are givers. Hang around with business people. Hang around with doctors that are givers. Well, that's really good advice. Yeah, you got to cultivate. You got to be careful with the friends you hang around with, uh, the people you do business with, and make sure that you know, even if you mess up, even if you're hurt, that you can reflect and just adjust and kind of keep those people out or you know, arms, arms length and just keep moving forward, but don't let that change your personality and who you are in terms of being a giver. Cause that's still such a life giving spirit. If you, if you change, then they own you, they own you, they control you. Yeah. Milan, how can people, uh, contact you? Let's say they're listening to this and they're business owners, or they're just interested in connecting with you. What is uh, a couple of ways or one way that people can reach out to you? Well, email is M-I-L-A-N, M-I-L-A-N-T at inner, I-N-N-E-R, O-R-B-I-S dot C-A. That's my consulting firm. My phone number is 613-728-7030, extension 223. Okay, I'll make sure to link, put that in the description. So whatever podcast platform you guys are listening on, you can definitely find that. I want to thank you. Thank you so much for your willingness to come on the show and share your life story and some of your wisdom. Is there any last piece of, of advice that maybe you prepared that you wanted to share and didn't get a, a chance to talk about? Yeah, last piece of advice. It's not where you are today that matters. It's where you finish. And we'll end with that. I just want to say thank you again, Milan. For those of you listening on the, on a podcast app, remember to take a screenshot of your phone and share it on your Instagram story. Tag me at Thiago Luzvargi. Tag Milan on Instagram if you're if you're still active on it. I, I looked you up, and his Instagram is at M Topolovic T O P O L O V E C. That way we can see it on Instagram and then share it. It'll help people discover the podcast more, people grow and benefit from this conversation. Definitely, if you have business friends, uh, share this with them so that they're at least aware of all the things that we've talked about. Milan, thank you so much and have a great day. You're welcome. God bless. Hey, thank you again for listening to this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, it would mean the world to me if you left a five-star review on whatever platform you're using. Maybe that's Apple or Google Podcasts. It would mean a lot. Also, if you know anyone who has an unstoppable story, is inspirational and is having success in their area of expertise, then please send them my way so that I can share their story with others and encourage more people to live the life that they were designed to live. And I'll see you on the next episode.